Well, Warren Buffett, as we told you last week, boosted Berkshire Hathaway's bond holdings in the second quarter. Today, we explore whether or not the world's greatest investor misjudged high yield debt, and moreover, where is the best bet in bonds these days? My next guest helps manage over $500 billion as co-head of U.S. fixed income at BlackRock, and he's Curtis Arledge, joining us from his offices here in New York. Curtis, uh, great to have you with us on this program. Uh, and before I get to questioning for you, I just want to explain to our viewers what we talked about in terms of a good or bad bet from Buffett. I mean, essentially, he underwrote or he wrote credit default swaps, essentially ensuring uh, these high-yield uh, corporate bonds. And they've kind of blown up in some ways. I mean, he's gotten fees for writing these CDSs, but he had to pay out on a number of them because we've seen quite a few number of, of corporate bankruptcies. So, Curtis, did he or did he not make a bad call with these? Uh, listen, Warren Buffett's one of the world's greatest investors. Uh, he's going to make bets from time to time that don't necessarily pan out exactly the way that he thought they would. The high yield market uh, broadly did get to levels that were extremely cheap uh, back when the market was on its lows. And I think that Warren obviously is suffering from the fact that if, even in a market that rebounds, there are going to be names that don't necessarily make it. Mm -hmm. So, so some of the survivors in that portfolio, they, they will they will do okay and will definitely pay him uh, pay him some some income. But I don't know that it necessarily will, will cover the losses from uh, some of the names that don't make it. Right, and you've got to wonder, Curtis, right, if Buffett, the world's greatest investor, can get this wrong, then what's the hope for others in terms of these derivatives? Well, I think that uh, der the derivatives market and the cash market alike both have risks in them um, that need to be diversified. And I think that any investor who enters in these markets needs to understand that not all the transactions are going to work out and not to get too exposed to any one perspective on the investment markets. Okay, then are you recommending, though, that others get into this, or where's the best bet right now, then? Would you want to avoid this and move into other parts of the bond markets, or what? Well, again, we, we really do think that there are a number of segments of the bond market that are uh, still very attractive. Um, if you go back to November through March, a uh, period when the, the global markets were really confused, rates were, were uh, rates and credit products were very high, a number of investors saw valuation levels that were very attractive, but no one could figure out what the catalyst would be to get valuations to be more in line with uh, intrinsic value. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen a great recovery in the markets, so you can't buy markets broadly. You really do have have to do your homework uh, at a company by company level and asset by asset level. So we really encourage people not to, to think about just buying the high yield market or the mortgage market, but really you have to do the d due diligence at a much more in-depth level in the, in the fixed income markets today. Again, much cheaper back in the uh, earlier part of 2009, right. but, but where we find ourselves today, you really, it is, they're going to be survivors and they're going to be companies that don't make it because of the industries that they're in and the way in which their current, their balance sheets are positioned. But, and yet, Curtis, you could wake up on a Monday morning like today and see that the markets, the equity markets have all sold off and then you've got to wonder what you're going to do with your bonds. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things that we're going through now is coming out of the 2007 era. Uh, investors generally, uh, investors at the individual level and at the larger institutional level, level, all probably had too much risk in their portfolios. And, they're, and they're, we're going through a period of rebalancing portfolios broadly. Asset allocation trends are generally favoring, favoring a movement from too many risk assets to uh, more safer allocation. Uh, the discussions today about households even owning more treasuries as a percent of their total assets. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes sense for investors to have an asset allocation strategy and to diversify their balance sheets, their own personal balance sheets, according to that. Okay. Curtis, great to have you with us. Thanks so much for talking about the bond markets and Buffett. Curtis Arledge, co-head of U.S. Fixed Income at BlackRock.